Hi everybody, welcome back to Mike Nelson Maths. I'm Mike and today I'm very excited to be launching a brand new series on problem solving. These videos are inspired by the YouTube page number five. So please go and like and subscribe their page because all these ideas come from there. What we're doing is taking those ideas and putting them into a classroom setting. So these are activities that we have done with our own students between the ages of about five and 12. And we're going to take you through the steps of how we did it. Today's video is called the graceful tree conjecture and all students need to be able to understand is odd numbers and addition and subtraction. Now you can start, we start off with the numbers I think to seven or nine and then we work our way up. So we've done this with a grade two class and a grade three and a grade four class but you could extend it up to a much higher levels. The focus is on students understanding that all these areas of maths are interconnected, how they go about solving the problem. Now, obviously some of the videos on number five, the mathematics is exceptionally difficult. So we've sort of cherry picked which activities we think work best. So we hope you like this series. If you've got any feedback, if you've got any examples from when you did it in your classroom, please like us on the Facebook page, leave a comment on this video, or send us an email at michaeljnelson09 at gmail.com. But once again, the credit for these videos needs to go to the amazing work that Number File are doing. So please like and subscribe their page. But stay tuned to Mike Nelson Maths for more videos where we put those real life problems into action. Good luck. So I chose the graceful tree conjecture to be the first Number File problem to start with because it is probably my favorite one. The maths is extremely simple for students that would be trying this activity. It's the problem solving part that we're really focusing on. So the first thing we need to under understand is what a tree is. Now the number five video gives you a great definition of it, but basically what I say to my students is it's a network. It's a, we're looking at these trees as being some circles with some lines on it. Okay, and the problem is simple. I'm, for each circle, we have a series of odd numbers. So one, three, five, seven, nine. And I have five odd numbers because I have five circles. And I need to put those numbers into those circles, which seems simple. However, where the line is, is indicates the difference. So the difference between the number in this circle and the number in this circle. So we're looking at the difference between two connected circles and then those differences, there's four of them, have to be different. So if I put the numbers one, three, five, seven, nine, so if I do it on this board, one, three, five, seven, and nine, if I had that, the difference between one and three is two, three and five is two, five and seven is two, five and nine is four. So I have three connecting circles that have the same difference. So I can't use that one. So what I need to be able to do is have an explore and change them around. So I'm gonna put three and seven, that gives me a difference of four. Let's go nine is a difference of two. Nine and one, put one up there, that's eight. I'm doing really well. Problem is though, I need this to be different to those. And when I put it in there, the last number I haven't used is five. Well, that's a difference of four. So this combination doesn't work. And this is where, so how I would launch this is I pop this problem up on the board and I give students five or so minutes to have a go themselves. Have a look, see what they're doing. When I'm walking around, I'm not too worried about the maths because the maths is simply adding and subtracting numbers to 10. What I'm looking for is how they go about solving it. Now a student here has three of the four parts that they need. And often you'll see students grab their thing, it didn't work, rub the whole thing out and start again. Rather than looking at it and going, right, I've got three pieces how can I move these around so I can get the answer to work? So what we want to stop students doing is avoiding, is avoiding how, starting from scratch again. The second thing we want to look at 
is the possible combinations. So if we look at the fact, if we take one, the difference between one and each of these other numbers, I'll pop this up here, nine take away one equals eight. And then seven take away one equals six, five take away one equals four, and three take away one equals two. So within those numbers, if I vary them around, I will always have the differences of two, four, six, eight. And we can see that here, two, four, this should have been six, and that was eight. So what we are really getting the students to do is explore their, uh, this idea of a systematic approach to numbers and using what we already know, what we've already found out, to just fix the other parts. So as I said, I've launched this for about five minutes and let them have a go. We might have a discussion either as a whole class or a small class around this idea of, well, what differences am I looking for? For students who are really struggling with the idea, I may simplify it here and just have three, then add the fourth, then add the fifth. Obviously, how you draw this, how many circles you have, indicates how difficult the task is. It's a relatively difficult one for younger students to figure out anyway, but obviously you can extend up, add circles on, add different branches off. The only thing you can't do is create a complete loop. So you couldn't have these five in a circle. Okay, you've got to have sort of a start and an end point. So we're not too far off this. So if I pop in nine up here and one up here, this has a difference of eight. One and seven has a difference of six. Pop in five, that has a difference of four. And I pop in three here and that is a difference of two. So even for me, this took me a little bit of time before I started filming this video. So we might give them an answer and let them explore different variations. So you can change how you draw it and the numbers on there. So I might have a shape that looks like this. So I'd need an one, three, five, seven, nine, and 11 now because I have six circles, so I need six odd numbers, which means I'd have five, the five even numbers, two, four, six, eight, 10, as the five differences I would need. So I might, and I haven't had a go at this one, I might put one and three there, that's a difference of two, I'm gonna put an 11, that's a difference of eight. Um, let's go difference of seven for four. So I need five and you see immediately I've hit that problem of I've got two and then I'm gonna have the same thing down there. So how we draw them obviously changes the difficulty of the problem. But once again, the real focus for the students on this task is not so much the maths, but for students who need to really hone in on that idea of difference, this is a great activity, but what it is is that systematic approach to how we solve it. So the other way is you might have the numbers and can they draw the shape that it matches? But as I said, just check using five or six circles and just changing the way they're drawn. You could add in two off this side or two off here or one off there or one off there. You can add and change the designs as much as you like. So we hope you really enjoy this activity. As I said, the whole basis for this activity the maths behind this came from the number file video, so I strongly recommend you like and subscribe to their channel as an educator because it's given me a lot of ideas. And this is simply a way to then implement this into the classroom. So the reflection would be, obviously here's a, once students start to find the answer, how can they explain how they figured it out? Could you teach somebody else to figure out these in the future, is there a system that will help you here that you can then move into here rather than treating each individual one separately? So we hope you really enjoy this activity. Good luck and have fun.